Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and you may have noticed this is a new setup. Now I got a standing desk, the hand crank one from Ikea because I, come on, make videos for YouTube. I can't afford the electrical one. Two, I also got a brand new camera. If you guys see me on Instagram, I've been testing it and playing around a lot with this guy. And three, you are not here for that. You're here for the video. So I'm going to do what the title says. We are going to be building a kiosk machine using our Raspberry Pis. Now, if you guys don't know what a kiosk machine is or kiosk, I think it's just a term you would use, but it's mainly a computer that you could walk up to and kind of touch the screen or if you've got a keyboard and mouse and interact with it. But that is solely the program that is available for that machine. There's no start menu, there's no clock and all that other stuff. You're just, it's specific to that one application, whether being Chrome or whatever application you decide to use. This setup could really be used on uh, small business you could say a restaurant or a retail store you could set up like a monitor and display what you're doing now I built one of these a while back on a Raspberry Pi for a dealership where it will give you the status of the car and when it's going to be finished and basically it throws it up on a 42 inch monitor and the Raspberry Pi is just pulling information from the server saying like oh yeah this car went in half an hour later it's gonna be done stuff like that but in your environment like I said retail or restaurants or anything else you could use this type of setup um, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, but this could be applied on the Raspberry Pi Zeros or any other Raspberry Pi or any other board you could say. It's just a quick setup process. Now we are going to be using Raspbian Lite, which is the breakdown shell version. There's no desktop, nothing like that. We're going to be installing a minimal desktop onto our Raspbian Lite and boot right into that and open the specific application that we need. So here we booted up into our Raspbian Lite. And the first thing you want to do is configure your Wi-Fi, configure your uh, keyboard, locals, all that other stuff. So we're going to do that with sudo raspi-config. And then we're just going to go through this whole entire setup process. Uh, definitely change the password. I'm just going to leave it as default. Uh, network options. I'm going to be using Wi-Fi. If you got you could skip this step if you're not planning to use Wi-Fi. So once that's all done, you could ping Google or ping something just to see if you have internet. Now we're going to do a sudo apt-get update just to fetch the new repositories. And I'm, I'm really sorry about the lighting. I'm still working on it. I have a 32 inch monitor right in front of me that's blocking the light and I don't know if I want to move it around, but I like it in the center. So that's one of the things I kind of need to play with. I put a little mini light here. I have a light in the back. I, I'm still playing around with it. This is a new setup. All right, now that that is done, we're just going to have to install very minimal things. So here we're going to do sudo apt-get install dash dash no rec um, no install oh my god I always forget that recommends that way it won't install all the other stuff like x clock or I don't know whatever comes along with x server uh, so we're going to do x no install no recommends x server dash x org space x11 dash x server dash utils and then x init and then open box that's what we're going to be using the desktop manager will be open box hit enter and this will take let's see how many megabytes oh quick pretty quick maybe five minutes or so so i'm just going to fast forward this part until it's the installed version. All right, and we are done with basically setting up a desktop environment for us to use. Now, nothing looks like it's done. It just installed stuff. But the next thing you have to decide what application you need. So uh, just to make it easier, I'm going to be using Chromium browser. This way, you could just do an internet web page or something like that for your kiosk. So we're going to do sudo apt-get install no install recommend Chromium Browser. Hope I spelled that correctly. 245 megabytes, 66 to download. This is going to take like, I don't know, 10 minutes to install. So we're going to let this go as well. All right, and we are done and we are back. Now, what's the next step? Basically, initiating and getting everything booted and started from startup. Uh, if that sounded correct or not, but yeah, we're gonna have to modify this file uh, just so we could get everything auto started and uh, There's a couple of things we're gonna be putting in there just to disable like screen blinking screen savers and all this other stuff so we're gonna do sudo nano etc uh, xdg uh, open box 
auto start. In here, this is what we want to change around. So we basically don't need any of this. Uh, you could just leave it, everything commented out. But we are going to add some new stuff to the bottom. So here, we are going to do X set S off. So this will disable the screensaver. X set S no blank. So sometimes you know how uh, Raspberry Pi would just blank out the screen but don't turn off the monitor or just make it black. We're going to disable that as well. X set. DPMS. This will disable the blanking out the screen, like turning off the power to your monitor. So with those three in place, your machine or your kiosk is basically going to be running forever. So watch out for those screen burns. All right, here we're going to add our properties for Chromium. So we're going to do Chrome browser. Disable info bars because we don't want anybody to be able to type into those things and we're going to enable kiosk mode and our URL so I'm going to do HTTP s nova spirit.com slash shop so it's going to go right into my shop close that quote control X yes and that's it we basically set it up for booting it up into Chromium browser now to test this we could just do start X now, if you have a touch screen and you don't have a keyboard and mouse, you could do um, dash 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 no um, cursor like that. And it'll actually disable the mouse. But in our case, we have a cursor, we have a mouse, so we're going to keep that. So I'm going to do start X. So now that we know everything boots up, we still need to add the little attribute where when you start up the device, it'll boot right into uh, the X environment. So uh, we're going to drop right into shell with, by pressing Control alt f 2 Here we're going to log back in because we're on a different terminal. So we're going to do pi raspberry. All right, so here we're going to do nano.bash underscore profile. Now you might not have a file, if it's a new file, that's fine. All you have to do is add one line to it. Now here's a little thing, like I said, it's gonna be on my website. Uh, it's two brackets, dash Z, display, two ampersands, dollar sign again, D X D G underscore V T N R dash E Q, one, two ampersands, start X. And here, like I said, if you got no cursor, if you got touch screen, you could just do dash dash space dash no cursor. But uh, since we have a keyboard and mouse, we're just going to leave that out. Now, what the what this does is the first command basically tells it to use the first terminal. So as soon as you boot up and it auto logs into Pi, it's going to use the first terminal. And you want to take over that terminal, and that's what the first command is. And then the second command basically says to start X or start the X environment. We're going to hit Control X to save. Yes. Hit enter, and then we're basically done. So to test this, we're going to do sudo reboot, and it'll restart the unit, and it should it should automatically drop right into our browser. Oh, I almost forgot one of the steps that we did miss was um, auto login. So we're going to do pi raspberry for the password, and automatically it'll drop into shell. But I'm going to kick out of this. Go back into F2, go to Pi, log back in, and do a sudo raspi config. In here, I'm going to do boot options, and I am going to do, you see, auto login console. Hit enter, finish. Now we can reboot and try this all over again. So there we have it, guys. It basically works as intended. It, it, you could browse through my shop, you could change stuff, but you can't change the URL. And in order to really quit this, you could go Control Alt Function, well, Control Alt F2, and it'll drop into a prompt that you could actually type in and shut down and stuff like that. But there is ways to disable it. And if you wanted to go back to the original prompt, you go Control Alt F1, it'll bring you right back into the GUI. 
So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. And also, let me know what you think about this new setup, other than the lighting, which I am still working on. Now, this whole thing that we're dealing with right now, this kiosk mode, can be done in different applications. You don't have to use Chromium. Now, I came about this is because I'm helping a friend boot straight into Mac OS 9 for a little project that he's working on. So it basically turns on the Pi and goes right into Mac OS 9. So you're not stuck with just Chromium, but Chromium being one of the best browsers to do this because it has kiosk mode. So food for thought. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. So I had to film this video like so many times. I mean like the doorbell was ringing, my lighting was not good, my phone kept going off and I had to turn it off, I completely forgot. I also got mail, so hang out for this mail time, it's gonna be awesome. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's this new setup, I, I don't know. I really don't like how dark it is.